We have another bike. <sighs> We're not gonna unbox this here, we're gonna do it at my local bike shop, do it properly. So, let's go. A little bit rough around there. Where, where's it rough? Around the edge. Oh yeah. Might have a rubber finish there, maybe? Have a look. Oh, comes with some beautiful pedals for you. <laughs> there you go, it does have a rubber. Oh, it does have so a rubber? Okay. That's gonna cover up the unevenness. Yep. So no carbon paste or assembly paste. So you're gonna need to use or buy some from a shop. Okay. This is a um, finish line carbon paste. It smells disgusting. So what this, this is a high grit. So we, we use different grit compounds here. So some are very fine, some are more aggressive, and it just obviously gives a better hold on the seat post. You know, you want me to tell you about the bike. It looks like there's a fair intolerance at the front there. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. So we're gonna have to look at technical documentation on their website. Hopefully it's got information on all the torque settings. Colorado? Colorado? Is it just a road bike? To be honest, the packaging on is really good. Where you get a Shimano drive line, then they run a KMC chain. Some people might want to swap that out for new. Uh, carbon error bar. You know, this is effectively doing the same as what a carbon paste does. It gives a little bit of a grip. Put it into a rough position, and then we'll have a look at the rest of the bike. It's cut to length, which is good, so you've got an expanding wedge in there by the looks of that. Yeah, it's got a carbon steering. So all I'm doing is just gonna, I'm just gonna double check for you that there's actually grease in here. No, there's nothing. So what happened is the bike will creak like mad. That's pretty bad. There's also a lot of pitting on that, on that race. What's pitting? So see how the carbon's actually not finished? Yes. Properly? So if you've got a few specialists to scan that, that'll be a void, that'll be a void. Pretty obvious, right? You didn't have to scan that. You can see that the bearing seat has an imperfection. But obviously the main reason why I take these out is to inspect if the bearings are dry. We have a fully dry upper headset bearing. So they are bone dry. Really want that going through the lower assembly of a steerer tube. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll leave that up to you, what you yeah. do with that. So the rabbit hole continues. I've just driven two hours down the coast to Brisbane where I'm at Carbon Steed. They're a carbon fiber repair business. They also do some pretty awesome paint work. I'll link to that video up there if you missed it. And I'm here to see Gary about this fork. So let's get into it. <laughs> Come look at this. What's that? Dog's breakfast. Well, yeah, you, you said to me you wanted to bring it down to ultrasound and all that, which, you know, we've done, but we didn't need to do that, did we? No, <laughs> you know, like, you didn't know. yeah, I looked at it and said, well, it looks like a piece of crap, you know, it... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and without being overly harsh, you know, we said, you know, looking at cheap Chinese stuff, that wind space frame, I said, it looked like somebody had made it who had a sense of pride in their work and I appreciate how people put pride into what they make. Well, this is the opposite, really. Right. Um, you know, I look at it, you know, the cable hole's not round. Um, you know, I just pointed out yeah. before, I you know, that. yeah, <laughs> it's just a poor finish, a bump in it there yeah. that is just hasn't been finished off properly. And you came and asked me about voids and everything in the top of here. Well, you know, to me, this fork is made by a steerer tube, the fork, they're bonded together, and then they wrap here in carbon. Um, and whoever's wrapped it, they, it's, there's been no pride in it, no care. It's just done as a cheap fork, you know? Yes. Is it gonna break on your next ride? I don't think so. Yes. But does it pass ultrasound? No. We looked at an ultrasound, we looked at it versus the other fork downstairs there. The Scott fork. The Scott fork, and the Scott fork was way more consistent with readings than this one was. This is all over the place. What does that mean? When it's inconsistent with readings? Yeah, well, I don't see any carbon that I believe never has any voids in it, but this one is just wall to wall where I, I can't get readings. You know, like you get front wall, back wall, and you know, it was a 2.5 millimeters or something. Yes. Uh, I, it was not consistently that. And, one. Yeah, all over the place. And um, then I couldn't get a reading, which kind of tells me that there's a void in the middle of it. And then when it came up here, it's reading, you know, three millimetres, half a millimetre, which would suggest to me that there's a void between this carbon and the tube underneath, because obviously it's way more than half a millimetre. I've got nothing more to say about it no, other than that. No, no, mate. Thanks uh, for having a look at it. Yeah. I really appreciate it. But, you know, there's lots of people riding around on forks just like this all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just depends on whether you want a person to take a risk or not. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right, yeah. Yeah. And the answer for me is probably no. Yes. How does that look to you? Does it come with a warranty? 
So you're going to use a non-lithium based grease. Heaps of different greases for different applications, right? So I do, I've got one here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do use them, but yeah, oh, yeah, if it's all fresh and new and clean and so forth, I don't mind. But yeah, this here, so this is aluminium, yeah. that on top of there, that yeah. will create issues. You'll get probably a lot of oxidization around there and you'll get that kind of white, people see it as like a white powder. Yeah. So you probably want to make sure you grease that upper assembly as well. Normally those are rubberized. Next thing we'll tend to do is we'll take this rear wheel out of here. So this, again, the sounds to me, is even here. It's going to be dry. Yes. I think a little bit, but it's probably just from the bearings to be honest. Yeah, it's Why doesn't this end? You can kind of tell, just tell from the bearings. Yeah. You can hear a vibration in it, but... Um, these are 40 Nm, obviously get used to this all the time, but if you want... Oh, that's not time enough. Um, I go on a field, but that wasn't time enough. And then your rotor bolt. So we're going to look at torque settings on those. Which, I mean, these all seem like they've been done at the factory, which is cool. So it's interesting it doesn't come with Shimano rotors, actually. Okay. So, extracted the bottom bracket. Yep. So it's bone dry. So we've got an aluminium cup. Yep. So you see the marring on that. So there's nothing. It's bone dry. Yep. The other one's bone dry. Being bone dry, what's that going to do while you're riding? Again, creaking. Everyone creaking. blames the poor bottom bracket. Yep. We find a lot of the time it's not the bottom bracket. It's often other things. Yep. In this case, it would 100% be the bottom right, bracket. Because okay. it's just powder on it. I mean, it's literally bone dry in here. Because looking at this, this is, obviously, this is running an aluminium shell. And in this case, what we'll do is we rebuild all this assembly and we'll press it all together. Okay. And again, like sometimes with these, if, it's, if it is an aluminum face, we actually face the frame to give it an absolute parallel finish to the other cup side. So some of these bearings they're pressed in, they've got a bonding agent in there. Yep. In this case, they just fell out. Four is obviously we've got a nice uniform finish all the way around the cup. And then we've got a grease bottom bracket shell. Once I get the wheels in, then I can do my gear adjustments, derailleur hanger alignments and so forth. But now that I've done the headset bottom bracket assemblies and all your solid work, yes. you can kind of do the refinements now. So we okay. get the wheels in, put it on the floor and we'll go from there. Well, so, what are you found now, Aaron? What's going on? Oh, the wrong way around. So, <laughs> uh, so what does that mean for Australian law? Pretty much doesn't pass Australian standards. Okay. You do. So what you can do is realistically, most bikes won't have these horrible um, connectors. Uh, these are annoying because they rattle terribly. Right. They tend to like bang against each other. Yes. We're setting up the brakes and the caliper where it's mounted to the fork. Yeah. The faces of the fork itself are not square. That this rotor, like I said to you, that little brake rotor has a kick in it. So we're gonna have to sort that out in a moment. I'm Talk. gonna head away and you're gonna do something to it though. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna try and fix the um, caliper mounting area because it's not made very well. So I'm gonna have to face the fork Okay. Um, the disc brake caliper mount is on the piss, big time. So your brakes are rubbing yes. terribly. Yeah. I mean, it looks, it looks all right. Day two. The front brake though, now that we have a good square face, yes. notice straight away with the wheels that um, the hub bores have been, basically, if you will, they've been drilled um, off center. Wow. So the whole hub assembly uh, oscillate so it goes up and down with movement uh, yeah so in the flanges so the I've actually changed the rotor to a really basic steel rotor but this is nice and square I've tested it on another wheel yes. um, but as you actually spin the assembly uh, we have a large amount of up and down movement in the flange right. and what that does is it actually produces a serious wobble within the rotor um, so you can actually see the movement of the hub will go up and down. Now this is a Novatec hub, so it's obviously nothing to do with that Sava brand, but it's obviously what comes with the bicycle. Yes. So you've got to you know, take responsibility for that. So at the end of the day, that would be a pain in the bum for a normal person to build the bike out of a box. Um, could, because could you stop it from rubbing? No, it's impossible. It, at the moment, it's pretty much impossible. So I've asked you, you to, wheel? yeah, I've asked you to bring in another wheel to obviously try and get um, you to ride the bike. Um, but obviously you need to look at, obviously you would change a wheel there and uh, there's nothing you can do. In this case, it would be a replacement wheel or a complete wheel or you change the hub and yep. do a wheel build. Okay. Yeah, we've got slight movement in the, in the rear flange as well. I mean, these are the cheap, one of the cheapest Novatec hubs. They're nothing special, yep. but you would still expect it to at least um, spin on its axle, yes. you know, equal all the way around. So yeah, the bearings are nice and smooth, but that movement, that up and down concentricity issue there, we've just got a lot of movement. Front wheel is almost completely unrideable. I wouldn't ride that, there's no way. Um, you cannot get the disc brake to not rub. So I wanted to wrap up this video with providing you with a bit of context, particularly those of you who support the channel because you're probably wondering what the hell did I just see? Where did this come from? So essentially, there's an Aussie-based business that is bringing these bikes into the country. And can I just say up front, this business has only been fantastic about the issue and they're fully aware I'm making content 
about my experiences, but they reached out to me in October, late October, to see if I would review the bike that you just saw before Christmas. In return, I would get the bike, and I personally thought, well, looks like an interesting brand. I've never ridden it before. It's affordable, it's available for people, and from a personal perspective, I could at some point in the future sell the bike and make some revenue for the channel. So I took the project on, but as you just saw, it completely backfired and the bike was essentially unrideable and I've now boxed it up and I'm sending it back to where it came. So this was certainly a learning experience for me when it comes to these cheaper alternatives and I wanted to share the learning experience with you, albeit I was a little bit unsure initially because I know it's not gonna be an overly pleasant one for those on the other side of the fence, but I feel like it's important that these types of stories get shared because it can be a learning experience for everyone involved. So if you've gotten value out of this video, if you could please give it a like, it does help the channel out. I'd greatly appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, wait a minute.